Murray's Coal. Um, I'm an Australian surfboard shaper designer. Been surfing all my life. Uh, been a, was a pretty good competitive surfer. Uh, still find myself at this age surfing, shaping, surfing, shaping. And uh, I guess as you get older, you start wondering about your legacy. And one of the things that I've noticed in my lifetime is the degradation of our environment. So uh, I've been doing uh, any, any and all work I possibly can in trying to clean up oceans, beaches, uh, started surf rider in Europe, been a big part of a lot of environmental organisations. I'm a big supporter of Sea Shepherd and a behind the scenes guy there. So uh, yeah, so I've been a, a very active human. Well, that's time. good to hear. That's good to hear. So tell me a little bit about what Sea Shepherd is. Well, Sea Shepherd's an organisation that is basically trying to protect the animals of the ocean, the cestaceans, anyhow. So um, I just love the fact that they go in and they do something about it. It's a bit more like surfer style. You know, we just go and do it. Let's not talk about it. Let's just go and do it. Let's, let's make sure we don't break any laws, don't hurt anybody. But then we go in... And we nail people. We, we embarrass, humiliate. Well, Paul Watson does anyway. Sorry, I shouldn't be saying we, but he is a, an amazing human being. He's created an organisation where in this world of blah, blah, this guy is direct action, gets the job done, and he has saved a lot of wildlife out there in our oceans, you know. So when you say he's humiliated people, what does he do to do that? Oh, he, like for the Japanese, he said, you know, you're scientific whaling you know, down in, in, in Antarctica, but there's no scientific anything anywhere, you know. I mean, all they're doing is going down and killing them because they think that that's their right. And he just goes into courts and, you know, he embarrasses the hell out of them, basically. That's a beautiful thing. That's good to hear. So I, I heard you talking a little bit earlier about your concern with the plastic and plastic being in our ocean. Yeah, well, you know, there's been a phenomenon in the last 20 years. They've been, I first heard of this in Europe, that they, uh, the fishermen started reporting out to sea islands of, of, of plastic, of garbage just floating out there. It seems to all congeal. And uh, now they've got it in the northwest, and there's, they're finding these huge islands of plastic everywhere. Now, I mean, it's just people dumping plastic in the ocean. I mean, this is where, you know, we play, this is where we live, this is our lifestyle. I mean, who doesn't love a whale and a dolphin? I mean, that's where they live, man. And, you know, and of course, there's all the other wildlife too, but, you know, let's... But whales and dolphins, they're right? I mean, they're, they're, the most, they're the most important. They're, no, they're not the most important, but they're the cutest. And, they're, and they're, right, everyone can relate to, oh, who would ever want to eat a dolphin or, you know, go and kill a big, beautiful, intelligent whale, you know? So, so I mean, that perception is, you know, it's an easy perception to put out there, you know, where it's sort of hard to say, yeah, we've got to save the giant squid, you know, or we've got to save, uh, we've got to save the crabs. Well, hang on, those things are gnarly, you know? We've got to save the sea stuff. Yeah, well, yeah. Anyhow, so, so yeah, so it's, it's... The surfers are on the front line. We see at the beach and in the water the, the results of, you know, the bad, the downside of mankind's uh, cause and effect of, of some of our pretty bad, uh, bad habits, you know. Like in the 80s in Europe, we, I used to see, to, uh, there's a guy called Tom Curran and I, we used, asked one day, what could we do to help Europe? Because it's been so good to us. We were living in France in those days. And the beaches were covered in filthy plastic. There was just junk everywhere on the beaches. And what was happening then in Spain was the Spanish were just putting all their rubbish off the cliffs. It would go out to sea, then the Gulf current would bring it back in on the French beaches. So we started a campaign to educate, to, well, humiliate and educate, you know. <laughs> Anyhow, so, so there, you know, you, you look 20 years on and there's organisations and people have become aware of the cause and effect of, of dumping rubbish in the ocean. It's not just, it's just not some infinite big black hole that we dump it out of sight, out of mind. It's, oh, it's gone. You know, so, so that's, been, that's been really important, I think, yeah. Absolutely. So you, you mentioned you were a shaper, you're, you're a board shaper, correct? Yep. Now tell me a little bit about what you've done as a board shaper to 
contribute to keeping our our universe, our planet clean? Well, basically, I was in in Europe. I lived in France in the 80s and 90s, and I was the first person to um, to use non-toxic epoxy resins, and started thinking about started thinking about. Hey, Barton. Sorry. <laughs> hey, I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay. That that was Barton Lynch. He's an ex-world surfing champion, and you know, he rides my boards, and he's the commentator here. Just, just there you go. But, but um, yeah, so I was one of the first persons to start using non-toxic epoxy resins. Harder to work with, more expensive, but um, just over the last 20 years. I've really looked at, 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 at the toxic f footprint, call it the toxic footprint of a surfboard factory. And uh, I've had some health issues, you know, six years ago they gave me two or three years to live, had major prostate cancer, came to America, got fixed up, I mean beat every odd known to man. I'm waiting on my test results again tomorrow because I got it back. And with a combination of, of where the, the environment that I work in, plus the stress of, of business and everything, um, I can bring it down to lifestyle, in, in, uh, that I've always pushed the envelope. Anybody that asks you, asked about me, I'm probably I'm sort of called a bit of a stirrer and you know, always been on the cutting edge of a lot of things, you know, and a pretty crazy mad lifestyle too. So. Well, that's that's good to know. That's good to know. But, 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 but just 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 to get back to, we're working at the moment in trying to clean the surfboard industry up. Everybody talk. Every surfboard that you see is basically a toxic nightmare. The surfboard workers work in environments that are third world. Um, a lot of people don't realise the toxic effects on a lot of the the workers now over 20, 30 years. That's happening. So at the moment. We're hoping, we're really, really hoping that that we can, that I can have an effect and start talking to people and people everywhere. I've just been to a trade show. People are becoming very aware of trying to build environmentally friendly surfboards. If not, we're hypocritical. We're trying Absolutely. to save the ocean. <laughs> And what else have we got? <laughs> We're riding them with toxic surfboards, so it, it's it's a work in progress. Absolutely, absolutely. Now bringing it back to water, it's been kind of a main theme in our conversation thus yeah. far. What can just your average Joe, your average surf, your average beachgoer, what can we do to keep our oceans clean and also conserve water best we can? Well, you know, I know they're two separate things. There, but. there is. I mean, I'm I'm just blown out in California how you've got no rainfall, and the way you use water here, like in Australia, we have massive droughts. But you just seem to we call them water wallies. You just seem to uh, use water, and there's water going down the gutters. And I saw this amazing thing up there before. There's four times more uh, lawn grass lawns than there is crops in the world. Huh? I mean, I looked at that and went, are we really that bad? And I think we've just got to be really, really conscious, really conscious that everything you buy, that everything you, you look at and a part of, we're, we're all consumers. It comes down to the consumer. Have a look at what you're buying. Is it an environmentally responsible product? You know, I mean, th that, that is where it starts. It starts with you at home in, in what you consume. Yeah, what can we do at the beach? Well, don't leave the rubbish at the beach. You know, just because there's there's trash cans and all of this, just just this whole plastic throwaway thing, this whole you know disposable. This we seem to be living this amazing disposable lifestyle at the moment. You know, I actually just get a certain amount of t-shirts a year. I get a certain amount of shorts per year. Uh, I'm really lucky that I've got a company that supports me called Patagonia and um, I love Yvonne when he sort of he'll run an ad going if you don't need a ja new jacket well don't buy one of ours wait until it's worn out so I think it really boils down to consumerism that's what you can do as a person stop absolutely. consuming all the crap man uh, absolutely so just to finish this all up if you could in one sentence sum up something you would say to a young person a bit of advice a bit of Lo a logic or a knowledge, what, what would it be? 
I think if you just keep your lifestyle clean, you know, you, you keep your consumering clean, and, and by that I mean just be aware, just be conscious of everything you buy and everything you do has a cause and effect. You know, and, and you can, it starts with one person. It's like a pebble in the pond, you know. One person starts, the ripple goes out. You can, if you can get one other person to change their habits, and that one other person can change one other person, don't ever believe that, oh, I'm just one people out of a hundred million. That's just, I nearly said, that's BS, you know. I, I can't say the other words, I don't think. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, thank you so much. That was awesome. It's a pleasure. Thank